After he had said many things, Jesus went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you untying it, just say this, The Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? And they said, The Lord needs it. And then they brought it to Jesus. And after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road for all of the deeds of power they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd, they said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. 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 We are not alone. Cherished words in our community, the opening of a United Church of Canada creed written in the 1960s. We are not alone. There is comfort in that. We are not alone. God is with us. But there is also a powerful reminder in those words. We are not alone. We are together in this, together with folks who do not vote the way that we do, who do not talk the way that we do, do not tell the same stories or share the same collective wisdom. 
We are not alone. And God is revealed in the incredible diversity of creation and humanity. Love is not defined or confined by a single perspective or group. We are not alone. So we are cis, hetero, lesbian, bi, gay, trans, queer, two-spirited, binary, non-binary, fluid. We choose our pronouns and how we share ourselves with the world. We are not alone, not in shaping the church, not in revealing God, and not in loving our neighbors. We are not alone. There are those who came to this land to build lives for themselves. There are those descended from, from ones who were brought here against their will. There are those who are here today as refugees, no longer able to survive in a place they once called home. We are not alone, and we share with each other not only the injustice and the wrongs that have been done, but also the beauty, the brilliance, and the love that has shaped us. We are not alone. There are those here now whose ancestors were here thousands of years before settlers arrived. Their stories, culture, wisdom, and medicine suppressed misrepresented or ignored, their lives devalued and often targeted. The colonial designs on Turtle Island were predicated on the idea that settlers were alone in sophistication, alone in wisdom and culture, alone as children of the Creator. But we know that we are not alone, not then and not now. All of us are on land that has been cared for and essential to indigenous folk who came before and are here today. Their medicine, wisdom, and spirituality are here that we might experience God more broadly and more deeply. That we might rejoice in the truth that we are not alone. Treaties in Toronto have been entered into with the Wendat, the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, the Chippewa, the Mississaugas of the New Credit, but there are many other nations present in our city today. We are not alone, and so we commit ourselves not only to recognizing each other, but to rejoicing in each other, sharing our gifts with one another. We are not alone, and together we are committed to sharing and writing the stories of humanity faith, God, and Jubilee. We're really glad that you're here. We're glad that we are not alone together. We will be celebrating communion later in the service, so you may want to have some bread and juice or tea and toast available so that you can participate. Without the elements, bread and juice, you are still a full participant when you come with only an open heart. We hope that you will join us at the virtual table. Jubilee United Church includes in-person worship as well as digital Sunday worship. We are committed to emerging out of lockdown and continuing digital services like this Sunday service, as well as supporting communities like Resistance Church and pursuing new ways of connecting and engaging in spiritual community as opportunities arise. And they are arising. At Jubilee United Church in-person gatherings, we will continue the wearing of masks. This includes Sunday worship. Singing is allowed at Sunday worship, provided masks remain in place. We are doing this for the safety and comfort of our more vulnerable community members, but will very likely over time change our practices to meet the needs and the comfort of those who gather. We begin now by sharing the news that Robert Boyd died on Thursday. Robert was instrumental in building and equipping Jubilee to be the community and ministry that it is today. Robert will be greatly missed. 
Further information, including plans for a funeral, will be sent to the congregation by email when things are finalized. For now, we hold Robert, his family, and friends in our hearts and prayers. And although we've already shared the news of Jean Phelps' death some time ago, we are able to share the news of a funeral service for Jean at Jubilee on Saturday, April 23rd at 11 a.m. And you are invited. The community is invited. There are no restrictions on the number of people gathering, but we will require all attendees to be masked while indoors. Holy Week is upon us. It begins tomorrow. Monday through Friday, we will have in-person Bible study from 8.30 to 9.30 each morning. You don't have to attend them all. Any single day can be experienced as a complete study on its own. We will read the gospel accounts of Easter and consider what they might be saying to us in light of two years of pandemic and our current emergence from lockdown. Are we living an Easter story? On Wednesday evening, we're having a virtual watch party at 7 p.m. We will gather on Zoom to watch the original Jesus Christ Superstar movie directed by Norman Jewison. And we'll watch the movie and chat during the film and after the film. You are invited to join us and the Zoom link will be on the website. On Monday, Thursday, there will be a virtual service of the Last Supper and the Passion of Jesus. It will be available on Thursday at 7 p.m., but would also be very appropriate for Good Friday if you would rather have our virtual Good Friday service. For those who are prepared to gather in person, we will have an in-person service on Good Friday at 10.30 a.m. On Easter Sunday, we will once again have a sunrise service at 8 a.m. out on the labyrinth. A casual 45-minute service celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. We're not yet ready to bring back the Easter breakfast, but you know, you will have time to scoot home and then come back and join us for the full Easter Sunday in-person service at 10.30 a.m. There is lots to do this Holy Week in person and from the comfort of your home, and we really do hope that you will take the time to join us. Former Green Team members and anyone who might like to be part of a group at Jubilee that takes seriously our responsibility to the environment, and looks to find ways for us to make Jubilee more responsible and caring of the planet? Well, if you're interested in being part of this group, please be in touch with Reverend Brianne at bswan at jubileeunited.ca. And by the way, you might notice that already we are collecting coffee cups again. You know those coffee cups that can't be recycled? Well, they can be shredded and we have just the place to do it. So you can bring your coffee cups to Jubilee where we will collect them and make sure that they are responsibly shredded and put to good use. We have recently been approached by some folks looking for support for a refugee family. We've had success in the past sponsoring refugees and the need has not gone away. We're not planning something at this very moment, but if you are interested in being part of a refugee committee that will look at the viability and the practical reality of sponsoring further refugees, please be in touch with Reverend Brianne at bswan at jubileeunited.ca. Today and on Easter Sunday, we are offering sunflower seeds in solidarity with the victims of war in Ukraine. We will offer a modest number of seeds that can be planted and will emerge as sunflowers, the national flower of Ukraine. At this time, we will take donations to support Ukraine relief and rebuilding. All the money donated will be sent to the United Church of Canada Ukraine Relief Fund, which is active on the ground in the Ukraine with local agencies through the ACT Alliance. Besides the flowers and the donations, we also encourage each of us to hold Ukraine and all those who desire peace in our prayers. And as always, you know I'm looking for good news to include in our services. We can never have enough good news. So please send me your pictures, your videos, your stories of good news so that we can share with others. And if you're really keen, in the next three days, you could send me a video or an audio file saying, rise and shine for our Easter service. You can even send me a picture of you somehow communicating rise and shine for our Easter service. You could write it on a card and hold it up. I don't know. However you want to say rise and shine, I want you to say it and I want to use it in our service. And I know that I should have let you know weeks ago, but don't we all love surprises? 
<laughs> Rise and shine. Say it, show it, write it, and share it with me, please. And of course, don't forget about limericks. Perfect, flawed, funny, and odd. We really do want to read your limericks. And you know where to send them. And see lie at jubileeunited.ca. And finally, thank you for your support. Your time, your wisdom, your experience, your money, your patience, and your love. All of these things help to shape our community and make it possible to respond to God's call to love our neighbors within and beyond our community. Your donations made through PAR, that's pre-authorized remittance, e-transfer, Canada Helps, or delivered directly to the church are an investment in a ministry that promises to be here for years, even generations to come. Your donations, your support help to make Easter real as we not only emerge from lockdown, but we rise and shine, revealing an open and inclusive faith community that is willing to trust in God even as we reach beyond our grasp and make a difference in people's lives. Thank you for this wonderful ministry and your investment in Jubilee. God bless. As I come to light the Christ candle, I wish to recognize the light of Christ that I have seen because of Jim Harbell. Jim came to Jubilee as a student from Emmanuel College, completing his Master's of Divinity Studies as he seeks ordination in the United Church of Canada. Eight hours a week for eight months is how Jim's time with us was defined. Doesn't seem like eight months, does it? <laughs> and he sure did more than eight hours a week worth of work with us at Jubilee. Participating in worship, preaching, connecting with people in the community, and helping us completely reimagine how we might connect and care for the people in our community. Well, Jim has been a great friend and an asset to Jubilee. I see the light of Christ in the way that Jim has been wise but vulnerable. A source of insight and expertise, while also being a committed learner. But the light of Christ is not just evident in Jim. Jim had a support committee that met with him regularly, providing counsel and discerning hearts. Our entire staff enjoyed working with Jim. All of those responsible for the Call Everyone campaign, from the organizers to the callers, even those who answered the phone and shared their thoughts, feelings, hopes, and dreams for Jubilee, all of these people radiate the light of Christ because Jim dared to start something. When God called Moses to go back to Egypt and lead the Israelites out of oppression, Moses said to God, Who am I to do such a thing? And God replied, not by telling Moses why or who Moses was. Instead, God told Moses who God was and assured Moses that God was with him. It doesn't matter where you are on the learning curve. When God is with you, remarkable things will happen. Remarkable things have happened with Jim, revealing to me God's presence with Jim and the light of Christ shining brightly. As we acknowledge the light, we take a moment to thank Jim and to bless him on his journey forward as God calls him to new challenges and adventures. New places that need light. Bless you, Jim Harbell, and thank you for blessing us with your ministry and Christ's light. Go always with God. We give thanks to God because they are so good and their love and their love lasts forever and ever. We thank you because you enter our prayers and give us hope. It's like a brick that the builders have thrown in the trash became the most important one. God did that.
and it is awesome. This is the day that God has made. Let us be joyful and happy. We ask you to save us, God, from all the evil things. And we know what that those who come doing what is right are blessed. God has given us light. Let's have a parade, a huge celebration. Because God's love lasts always and forever. Good work. Thanks. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and her colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them! And he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble, and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of the donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who cares in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven! Like that? When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, The crowds were saying, this is the prophet, Jesus, from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 
Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I invite you to pray with me. Holy and loving God, may the words from my mouth and the meditations on all our hearts gathered at screens near and far this morning be pleasing to you. Amen. There is an old song from the 30s. It goes, I love a parade. The tramping of feet, I love every beat when I hear a drum. I just want to stand and cheer as they come. I moved to Toronto when I was 18, and it became clear to me that the parade, the big parade in this city, was the Santa Claus Parade. I went one year, and only one year, because it wasn't really my parade. It was too big. Everything, actually, in my life at that time felt too big. Living in this city all by myself, I was still figuring out the subway system and those weird scramble intersections. And at the parade, everywhere I looked, it was, it was loud. It was way, way, way too loud. And I didn't know anybody. These were not my people. And it made me ache for home a little bit because, I mean, I do love a parade. I get parades. We had a Santa Claus parade when I was growing up. But the big parade, and I mean the big, big parade, when I was growing up, was the Coldwater Fall Fair parade. I marched in that parade every year from kindergarten to OAC. Yes, I was one of the very last years Ontario had a 13th grade. In elementary school, up until grade 8, my entire elementary school was bussed in to march in that parade. My entire school, joining with two other entire schools, marching down the main street of Coldwater. In grade 8, you had the possibility of being one of the drummers. And I never received this privilege, but I would walk with my friends and we would wave at our parents. And every year there was a different theme for the parade that we would dress up for. And I am especially fond of the year I walked through the downtown of Coldwater dressed as a chicken. And during high school, I was in the band and it was amazing to be the one playing the music I'd already spent years marching to. I knew all the songs before I ever put the clarinet to my lips. For 13 years, I walked in that parade with all of my friends. We would wave to our families, wave to everybody in the community. The churches had their floats. In fact, almost every adult I went to church with also volunteered at the fair. And the agricultural clubs from all over the county would come with their cows and their horses to show. It was just a known rule. On the third Sunday of September, be careful where you step and never wear your good shoes. We would move in that parade to the fairgrounds as an entire community together, ready to share in this annual festival that was so central to our identity. This was just what you did. It was simply where you were. And after the opening ceremonies and going on a few rides, many of which in hindsight, I'm not actually sure how they pass the safety inspections, I would go into the arena with my friends and maybe a brother or two, and we would see if our vegetables won any prizes. Not going to brag too much, but I once won first place for my chocolate chip cookies. And I still have the ribbon. There was the pie competition. And the quilt competition. The who grew the biggest pumpkin competition. And the how far can you pull this bale of hay competition. And then in the evening, we had the demolition derby. And you could hear it from kilometers away. Just... 
dudes, and they always did seem to be dudes, driving around on the grounds, smashing the crap out of one another's cars. It was ridiculous. And it was glorious. Now, if you didn't grow up in a small town, in a small tight-knit community where everybody knows everybody, it may be hard to understand the feeling I'm feeling now as I talk about this yearly festival. Walking around with so many people I loved and cared about. Adults who I was not related to but grew up with at church or the hockey arena or because I was with the same group of 20 kids for all of public school and their parents were all known to me. An entire community coming together entirely invested in the well-being of the community and it all manifesting in that fair, that festival. And that festival all began in a parade. We heard this morning about another parade at the beginning of another annual festival. It is the beginning of the annual Passover festival and Jesus is entering Jerusalem in a parade. Maybe a smaller parade, perhaps without the paper mache costumes. But he has managed to get one of the 4-H club kids to lend him a donkey and a colt. And perhaps the spectacle is just how Jesus manages to ride both the donkey and the colt at the same time. But he parades into the city with his friends, with so many people standing there to greet him, waving palm branches, spreading their cloaks on the ground. And although people would have come to Jerusalem from all over, many of these people would have been known to Jesus from when he was a boy. Years of traveling to this city with his family. I wonder what they would have thought watching him process into the city. I wonder what Jesus would have felt entering the city in a parade surrounded by the people he loved. When I was about 17, I was at the fall fair hanging out with some of my friends. We'd been on the rides, we'd checked out the horses, we'd sampled the chili and the candy floss and had just spent an hour eating ice cream by the river talking about, I can't even remember, but I'd like to think it wasn't talking about something as trivial as boys. I'm going to choose to believe we were talking about university or the ways adults had messed up the world or how special, how perfect it was to be lying on the grass with each other. It started to get dark and my friend Ashley walked home. I went to go look for my brothers. My friend Jennifer had her license and a car and said she'd see us at school on Monday. Except we didn't see Jennifer at school on Monday. As she was driving, another vehicle hit hers and she died. The driver was maybe drunk. I can't remember if that was ever confirmed or not or if I'm just not remembering it properly, it was kind of a traumatic weekend. All I know is I was hanging out with my friend and then I was never going to see her again, ever. It was all over. And I remember after the dust had at least started to settle, thinking back on that last day and how that day, that ice cream, that conversation in the grass as the stars were coming out, how all of that was her last good thing. And I also remember lying awake and wondering, did she know? Did she know it was going to be her last good thing? And I don't mean consciously, like knowing like a premonition, but did any part of her, her subconscious, her spirit, did it know? And in my sadness, I became consumed with the wondering, did she know? Do any of us know? Will I know? Will I know somehow deep down when I am approaching the last good thing? 
Various gospel accounts describe the events after Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem differently. In Luke's version of the Christ story, right after the parade, Jesus looks upon Jerusalem with sadness as he continues addressing the Pharisees. Luke says, As he came near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, If you, even you, had only recognized on this day the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. Indeed, the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up ramparts around you and surround you and hem you in on every side. They will crush you to the ground, you and your children within you. And they will not leave within you one stone upon another because you did not recognize the time of your visitation from God. Now, the analogy that I am definitely not making is that my friend Jenny, my friend, that she should have recognized anything. But in this story, Jesus knows. He knows that this high, this joy expressed by the crowds, it's not going to last. I love a parade. But this party, it is drawing to an end. The way I have grown up listening to this story is that in this moment, when Jesus enters the city, things are really, really good. The crowds recognize Jesus as something different, something special. Perhaps they don't understand everything about who Jesus is, but they do seem to get, here is somebody who is with us and for us. And then, as I got older, the political element of this display was layered. Jesus enters Jerusalem as a king might be greeted, a blatant political statement. There is a back and forth between scholars about whether at this very moment that Jesus is entering the city, Pilate is also entering Jerusalem from another gate. Pilate riding a war horse and marching as a display of Rome's military might during a Jewish religious festival where the risk of insurgents is heightened. And here's Jesus on a donkey, the people waving branches and spreading their cloaks before him. And all of this is important, and I think that by now many of you know me well enough to understand that the justice elements of our faith are how the Spirit pokes me to get out of bed in the morning, and not despair that the world is oftentimes a raging dumpster fire. But this year, this time, as I am sitting with and reflecting on this very familiar story, I am wondering, did he know? Not did Jesus know how things were going to end, because he did when powers threatened people start dying. That is a truth which has existed long before Jesus. But in these moments, in the parade, and the party being surrounded by his friends in the way we tell this story as we do when we wave the branches. I wonder, did he know somewhere deep down that this was possibly the last good thing? The next Sunday we gather together will be Easter. And we will sing and we will be joyous and we will dance triumphant that death is never, ever the final word in any story that holds truth and meaning. But in this moment, we are standing with Jesus. And if we look ahead with him, the only thing we can see is, well, the raging dumpster fire. But for right now, Imagining all of us gathered virtually at screens across the country. This, this is good. It may possibly be the last good thing. The last good story we tell this week. But it is good. And that is something to hold on to as we move through the coming days. Amen. Hosanna, Hosanna, 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. May the God who gives us everything we need be with you. May God be with you so you lack nothing. Let us empty ourselves of the shadows within. May God fill our empty hearts with the light of love. Trust in God in these moments, for God is with us. We come to the one who saves us with love. Like wheat you sifted chaos, God who helps in every moment, and creation was formed from the emptiness, mornings which break bright and clear, Gentle breezes that herald spring, soft rain which nourishes new life. We were shaped in your image, and you longed to serve us with your love. But we cried for you to release death so that we might welcome it with open arms. Time and again you sent prophets, women and men who sought to heal our grief with words of hope, to wipe the tears from our cheeks. Yet we refused to listen to them, mocking their words and insulting them. Then you chose to send your child, the one who would not let his faith fail him, but would follow you all the way to death. with those who desire to feast with you, with those whose hearts are filled with nails, we offer our thanksgiving to you. Holy, holy, holy are you, God whose heart aches with grief. All creation will mingle its tears with yours this week. Have grace on all who journey in the coming days. Blessed is the one who stands by you through everything. Have grace on all who seek to find peace in the time to come. Daring to imagine new life for your children, God of holiness and hope, Jesus became one of us, made in your image. He could have turned the corner every time he saw us, but chose to greet us with open arms. He could have forgotten us, leaving us alone in our foolishness, but he remembered us in death and in life. He could have hardened his face in judgment and punishment toward us, but he chose to endure the passion, being mocked and beaten, being insulted and spat upon, being betrayed into death's hands. The powerful, the bullies of the world, forgot him after his death. But you raised him to new life and new hope for all. Though we fear to follow, we will. Though we wonder how Jesus was obedient, still we proclaim this mystery called faith. In every moment, Jesus knew you were with him. In the moment of death, Jesus committed himself to you. In the moment of resurrection, you committed yourself to him in the moments to come, you will commit yourself to us. We remember now our friend, companion, and lover, Jesus, who before his suffering earnestly desired to eat with his companions the Passover of liberation. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, he passed the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, to remember me.
and when you bring us home, at the end of all time and history, we will join our sisters and brothers and siblings who have been remembered by you in every place, every moment, in serving you through all eternity. God in community, holy in one. God, pour your spirit on us that we may know Christ in the breaking of the bread, and that in word and deed we may be channels of your love, peace, and justice in the world. As we eat and drink together, make us one with Christ and one in Christ, who most closely resemble the vision of your kingdom. Thank you, O Christ, for this feast of life. We are fed by your love. We are strengthened by your life. We are sent forth into this world to live into the visions God has laid on our hearts. We are now commissioned to feed as we have been fed, forgive as we have been forgiven, love as we have been loved. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our Father, our Mother, who art in heaven, who are in all the earth, hallowed be thy name. Holy is your truth. Thy kingdom come. May your wisdom come. Thy will be done on earth. Your circle be one uniting. As it is in heaven. Heaven and earth. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us today a nurturing spirit. And forgive us our trespasses. Heal through us as we. As we forgive those who trespass. Ourselves are healed. Against us. Lead us not into temptation. Lead us into fullness of life. But deliver us from evil. And liberate all that is good. For thine is the kingdom. For the wisdom. The power and the glory. Presence and goodness are yours. Now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen.
walking down to the city's gate Descend the mountain and wade through viscous air Until the oxygen stays prayer If every voice in this town was still The rocks would shout, the pebbles chatter on They'd whisper secrets changed with dawn Before the fall Writing still etched on the wall With either the weight or the news The saddest words drop when time is swift I'm stiff and weep But lean towards his kiss On leveled path but still bemused Before the fall Writing still etched on the wall With either the weight or the news Of ways we've been here before Desperate with blood on the doors And still all I ache for is you I've been calling for you Caught between the wilderness and storm